think of heat or warmth, if you're a woman, you'll probably think of a fur coat. And if the wish is father to the thought, you'll have to drag father away from his idea of warmth uh, to buy it. So warming to our subject, let's see what they did about it in the old days. Well, they did practically nothing. The primitive hearth was just a slab of awfully rude clay, and the smoke jolly well went where it listed, if we may air our knowledge of the classics. It took 14 centuries to find out what chimneys were for, and then a smoke vent called a louver was invented. There's a good example of an old louver at Staples Inn, London. The old-fashioned hearth can still be seen at some of the large country houses, like the one at Penchurst. The logs were placed on elaborate andirons, fine specimens of the metal worker's craft. A simple stone called a reardas is still the hearth of the Shetland Islanders. When buildings began to rise to several floors, the centre hearth wasn't much use, so the fireplace came to town. Without a chimney, the smoke went through a hole in the wall. Now let's see what heat can do, apart from giving us blood pressure and ripening our tomatoes. You'll remember that sulphurous mixture we kids knew as Pharaoh's serpents. Even at that tender age, we could see snakes. And we don't mean what you mean, uh, Mrs. Twiddle. If only nations could expand without heat, the world would be a happier place to live in. But they can no more do it than this ball. You see, it's too big now to go through with it. Then someone thought that heat might just as well expand the mercury in a thermometer. Metals are so fond of the heat that a copper ball wrapped in a handkerchief will collect all of it, leaving uh, none to even scorch the fabric. Borrowing a beautifully white cambric handkerchief from one of the studio staff, we returned it after the experiment in all its pristine beauty. Although dark surfaces attract the heat more than light ones, that doesn't explain why we pale faces don't get much sun. But an experiment with a windmill in a vacuum shows how the blackened veins rush towards the heat. And that's the reason, one of them anyway, why girls wear white to get brown. But Dr. Science wants to take the really high temperatures, and the arc welder is born. Fed by oxygen, it can work underwater with the same ease. Not content with merely taking the chill off, the electric furnace comes along to prove that it's the hottest idea so far. A thick lining of asbestos keeps in the fierce heat, and an iron nut is put in to melt. In the old days, of course, a stoker would say it with a shovel. Now he says it with a switch. At 1,200 degrees centigrade, cast iron melts. We really don't blame it. Even we would perspire a little. And as research goes on, and maybe on, we find the hottest ever in the electric oven. Yes, perhaps you're right. <laughs> <laughs>